What are the sad things about the United States of America at this current moment, at this current point in time, is that we have all of these people talking about how we need to make progress on racial issues, we need to fight back against white supremacy, which is around every corner. Hold on a second, I think I, I, I think some white supremacy might have tried to sneak up on me for a second, and how we are moving forward and progressing in our society. However, this is just not the case. What's happening in the United States of America right now in this moment is more similar to the Cultural Revolution over in China than anything comparable. Right now, what we're seeing is people rewriting history in their own image, and we're all supposed to just let it go because right now it's the current PC thing to do to pander to people who are knowingly putting forward terrible information just because we don't want to seem like evil, bad, evil, white racists. Don't be an evil, white racist by telling the truth. And a perfect example of that is what is going on in Hollywood right now. Now, there are plenty of fictional stories where we see racial recastings or modern reimaginings, as some people like to call them, and those have varying degrees of success and varying degrees of annoyance for members of the audience. A lot of people seemed bothered by the moves in the new Lord of the Rings series to do this, but as I said at the time, even though they were doing that for political reasons, it was the fact that those politics entered into the writing of the show, which was actually bothering the members of the audience. That's one of the reasons why The Lord of the Rings Rings of Power had a very low completion rate. It started off big because of the marketing push, but very few people, including myself, didn't actually finish the series. By contrast, you have House of the Dragon, which is a new IP, but it's based in something that we already know. They did a racial recasting of one house in particular, but since House of the Dragon was what we came to expect from the better seasons of Game of Thrones, and the Valerions as a house were actually portrayed pretty well, they got good actors on board to play those parts, a lot of people were essentially fine with that, and they ended up letting it go. And in fact, I specifically explained when it came to that series how the Valerions, even though they were clearly meant to look like the Targaryens from the books, were not featured in the original series, and they're a seafaring people, meaning that they traveled the world much more often, thus they were much more likely to intermix with local populations, so their look being distinct based on us not seeing them before and based on them being a seafaring people actually made sense within the confines of the universe. A lot of times we look at series like The Witcher and you have a village of 30 people and there's people from like 20 different ethnic groups in that village and your brain is like, wait a minute, that is not exactly how this is supposed to work. My brain understands how genetics work in reality and typically in a small village in a very isolated region, you get a homogenous population, not the most diverse representation of UN representatives that you have. But the thing is, that's fiction. The thing is, it's not really history. And even some series where they talk about like the Queen of England or whatever, those are historical fictions. What we have now from Netflix is a so-called documentary that is attempting to do the same thing with Cleopatra, and of course, it is putting forward this ridiculous theory that the Egyptians are black Americans. And the reason I say black Americans and not Africans is because, make no mistake about it, this is all about Americans and not Africans. There was a time long ago when women wooed with unparalleled power as warriors, queens, mothers of nations. And there is none. So two quick things. First and foremost, executive produced by Jada Pinkett Smith, and I believe it's narrated by Jada Pinkett Smith, is always the marker of you're going to get some low quality, possibly racist, possibly conspiratorial, absolute hot garbage. Secondly, while Cleopatra was quite the fascinating woman, I believe she spoke seven different languages, she was not this warrior, girl boss, girl feminist hero as she's portrayed in this Netflix documentary. But of course, this isn't about history, despite the fact that they're calling it a documentary. This is about a cultural revolution. They're tearing down what we know to be true in order to replace it with insane conspiracy theories about how Egyptian people were black Americans. And again, I'm going to say black Americans because that's who this is really about. 
People in Africa do not care about making the Egyptians sub-Saharan Africans. That is not a real thing. When you go talk to Egyptian scholars, people who actually exhume mummies and whatnot, these people in Egypt know for a fact that this is all about black Americans, not any other group. So we have the Cleopatra as a black woman thing. Among them more iconic than Cleopatra. I would die for Egypt. What would you die for? I am Isis. I am a god. As long as she's alive, she is the pharaoh. My father's will names me co-ruler of Egypt. Julius Caesar is aware that Cleopatra is one of the best educated women in the Mediterranean. He wants to be king to Cleopatra's queen. There is no future without past. She was using these relationships with Mark Antony to protect herself and her country. There is no Rome without Egypt. Cleopatra was trying to save the country that she loved from destruction. I did what I had to do to protect what is mine. This is a woman exercising power. And of course, it's not enough for her to be a black queen, and make no mistake about it, the whole Jada Pinkett Smith partnering with Netflix is about portraying black queens in particular, but she also has to be a girl boss feminist, so that way your girls can look up to her, because we all know that if Cleopatra isn't a girl boss black woman warrior feminist, then no black girl will ever be able to complete high school in the United States of America. That's who Jada Pinkett Smith is doing this for. She's doing it for the kids, because we have to rewrite history in order for the kids to be happy, because oh my god, just think about the children. Now, this is ridiculous and by the way they actually say something in part of this documentary trailer which i can't say documentary sarcastic enough Cleopatra was a Ptolemaic ruler. The very first Ptolemy is a general of Alexander the Great. So right there they say something that should give you a pretty good idea of how Cleopatra looked, and that is that she is part of the Ptolemaic dynasty, and the first person in this dynasty was a general from Alexander the Great's army. Now, Alexander the Great is a notable figure in Greece. He is a Greek historical figure, and unsurprisingly, his general also Greek. This is why there is a complete and utter consensus supported by all the depictions, all the evidence that Cleopatra was overwhelmingly Greek. I forgot what the specific word is for it. It's actually uh, starts with an M, but she's about 75% Greek and 25% other Middle Eastern. And a lot of that might be somewhere in the Iran region of the world. So she is not African. She is not black American. We have statues, we have depictions, we have Roman art based on her, which focused on realism in that time period. And in no way, shape, or form is she a black person. Great. It's possible that she was an Egyptian. No, no, it, it, it actually wasn't. It's not possible that she was an Egyptian. She is in the Greek line of pharaohs of Egypt, a Greek dynasty. She was she was Greek. We we know that she was Greek. It's possible that she was an Egyptian. Excuse me, lady, they just said she came from a general from Alexander the Great's army. She, she's Greek. I imagine her to have curly hair like me and a similar skin color. So there's two things that really annoy me about this, and that is, first and foremost, her skin tone could have very easily been like this individual right here because he looks vaguely Middle Eastern. However, he's talking about how he imagines that, and then you have the white woman before him say, hey, just so you know, it's very possible that this woman that definitely was an Egyptian and was part of the Greek dynasty of pharaohs in Egypt and therefore is distinctly not Egyptian was Egyptian and then this guy who kind of looks Egyptian I'm not saying he is Egyptian but kind of looks Egyptian says oh I feel like she looks like this as if it is in dispute as if we don't have depictions of this woman as if we don't have evidence of what this person looked like and we don't know what a Greek looks like and we don't know that ancient Egyptians who are in northern Africa are not the same as sub-Saharan Africa it's ridiculous, but it's about to get more ridiculous. I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. This is where we're at in the United States of America. We drag out some lady and she says, I remember once my grandma told me, doesn't matter what they tell you in school, doesn't matter if they invent this method to determine her DNA, if they give you the history, if they give you any information, Cleopatra is black. I, I just want you to know that. Cleopatra, just, just a black woman. Her grandma told her that, therefore, therefore, it definitely has to be true, and it trumps all the overwhelming evidence to the contrary. 
She has become an icon. I'm a god. Queen of kings. Her story resonates with every woman. Look, every time they do a race swap in terms of casting and people complain about it because it's a race swap in the direction of black people or diversification, they say, oh, it's fiction. It's no big deal. What are you worried about? Or why are you paying attention to it? It's not like race was a key factor in determining the casting. Well, here we have something that is being sold as a documentary, and the documentary, which again is just not true, is dragging out some woman to tell you what her grandma thinks in the face of all the overwhelming evidence. And they're using some words, and then they have a guy that's like, I think she looked like me. So you think it's open for debate. And no, it's ridiculous, it's absurd. And again, it's all about rewriting history because it's about changing attitudes in the United States of America rather than actually giving you the information related to Cleopatra or in this documentary series. And by the way, I think one of the creators admitted as much. She said it was a political statement and an important political statement to do this, which again is not really what you want to go for in terms of a documentary. However, what we're seeing now is again more akin to a cultural revolution in China than it is to actually sharing factual information. Now, I give a lot of credit to the audience of this because it has 24,000 likes to 340,000 dislikes. And by the way, if you ever wondered why YouTube removed the dislike button, I have a plugin that allows me to see it. This is exactly why. It's so that the average everyday person can't see the corporate slop that they're putting out, the propaganda, and how it's being viewed by the public. It's to make you feel alone when you're watching trailers like this that are giving you obviously wrong information. And it's just insane that these people are able to get away with it. It's just insane that Jada Pinkett Smith is lying to you. And we're all supposed to pretend like not only is this a debatable issue or something that people are are even having questions about but it's actually tilted in the direction of Cleopatra being a black woman it's just not true I wish they would tell stories about the actual history of Africa they did have societies I know they don't have a written language in their societies so you have to do a little bit more work to figure out how they functioned and whatnot but it's human history and when you tell the story of human history you're gonna have all of the same things no matter where you go war conflict love and all that and I think it would be quite interesting. Now, I said early on and repeatedly that this is about black Americans or making Cleopatra a black American above anything else, even though they likely cast some British black person in this role. And the reason for that is not to say that all black Americans are interested in this kind of thing. In fact, if you walked up to the average black American and asked them about Egypt, it is not something that's top of mind. More likely, they're thinking about work or school or whatever they got going on in their lives, just like any regular American. So don't get it twisted. Don't get it confused. This isn't about your average everyday black American in this country. There's a very niche portion of the population that thinks that all historical figures are black or are looking looking for an impressive thing in history to point to and say, look, we did that. And these are people that are hyper obsessed with identity. And unfortunately, our society is pandering to these people and trying to gin up a bigger racial identity amongst black Americans than there needs to be. They don't want black people to integrate with the rest of the country. They want to feed them this history that is inaccurate. And they want to do so while telling you that the evil white racists are the ones that hid this history history from you as if I have any benefit from pointing out that a Greek and some Iranians came together eventually made Cleopatra and she ruled Egypt however many hundreds or thousands of years ago I couldn't give a crap about that but again, this is where we're at with this certain population, and Netflix is enabling. And by the way, if you're just curious, there is a certain group, I believe they ruled for around 100 years, of sub-Saharan Africans that came up from the South and then took over Egypt. And there is a period of time where you could do stories about people who were actually black. They're just not as well known a historical figure as Cleopatra, because again, she existed in a time that was absolutely crucial and not just Egypt, Greece, but also Rome. So they could actually tell stories about this. They could actually talk about it. They could actually enlighten you on the rulers of that. But Jada Pinkett Smith is obsessed with black queens in particular. And since she didn't find ones that she found interesting enough, she decided to make ones because, again, this is also about girl boss feminism. 
Also, I just want to point out that the obsession with the pyramids and the obsession with Egypt, while interesting because, you know, cradle of civilization and obviously they built monuments to stand the test of time, is actually incredibly Western and something that the white people were really obsessed with. Because one of the things that Western historians look for is permanence because we like to look at ruins and all that and try to figure out things related to the history. And one of the criticisms from people who defend black architecture or specifically architecture in Africa is that architecture in sub-Saharan Africa was actually built not for long-term permanence but it was built for practicality in the environment and to be clear there's actually something to these claims. I've been looking into this randomly coincidentally, and I thought it was important just to give you an idea that black people in Africa did build things. They just didn't get built for the same purposes. So a perfect example of this is the fact that when Europeans and when Middle Easterners landed on Africa on, I believe it was the West Coast of Africa, but don't quote me on that. They thought the structures were comparatively primitive to what is found in Europe. And by the way, in a lot of ways, that was in fact true. However, when they settled in the same areas as the Africans, what they ultimately ended up doing was building those same primitive structures because what they found out is that one of the reasons why they would elevate off the ground and they would angle their walls the way that they did and what they had as walls was so that they could have cooling breezes come in during the day because it was unbelievably hot in a lot of the places that they landed. Now again, these structures were not great monuments they weren't built to last thousands of years or anything like that don't think that I'm overstating it, but they were practical for the environment where people lived. And one of the things that we find out is that along the coast in these kinds of temperate zones, we have similar adaptations in order to bring in ventilation to certain areas. Now, look, I'm nerding out a little bit, but the thing is, I find it fascinating how various different people who did not learn or share the same techniques or have the same access to information or couldn't copy from one another adapt and create something solutions based on human ingenuity to the same issues worldwide but that's not good enough for people like Jada Pinkett Smith because she's obsessed with white people but not only is she obsessed with white people and by the way I specifically mean hating white people but she's also obsessed with what she thinks white people are obsessed with so one of the things that a lot of historians and a lot of them of course our European-based historians look at in terms of monuments is permanence, so she wants to find the oldest, most permanent thing attributed to black people, and then one of the people that is most notable, she wants to also tell you is a black person. So I know that was a long way around to this point, but that's what I mean when I say it's about black Americans, specifically a small minority of black Americans and not black Americans overall, and definitely not about Egyptians or about sub-Saharan Africans. And it's really sad because what you could do with this time, rather than just trying to steal the most iconic stuff and blackwash all over it, is take the time and go into sub-Saharan Africa, talk to people, learn about their legends, the histories of their people, and try to make stories or make a documentary based on whether or not you can find the evidence to support that. What I'm putting up on screen right now are images of Tajit Walata, which is one of the oldest surviving settlements in sub-Saharan Africa. It dates back all the way to 2300 BC, and it would be interesting to learn about this. It would be interesting to learn about the people who built this. And I'm just gonna throw up some images of this on screen so you can think about or imagine what a documentary would be like about actual history related to sub-Saharan Africans while we think about how Jada Pinkett Smith has decided instead to tell you that Cleopatra was a black queen, even though all the evidence is to the contrary of that. No Tajit Walata documentary. I think that would actually be interesting because it would be something new and unique rather than, oh, let's find a white person and recast them as a black person, but call it a documentary and have some woman trot it out to talk about what her grandma said. To me, that's not interesting. I'm not learning anything new. In fact, it's like anti-learning because you're deliberately trying to vague up an issue that could not be more clear. And to me, that's just not worth doing. That's just not interesting, especially since the obsession with permanence in terms of architecture and specifically with the pyramids and trying to say that the pyramids were built by black Americans specifically, because again, I will say it, it's not about sub-Saharan Africans, is kind of absurd because we all know that the pyramids were built 
by aliens and they were built specifically to be a power plant again look it up for yourself i'm not saying anything i'm just saying anyway that's all i really have for you guys today thank you so much for watching if you like the video show them by leaving a like subscribe for more content follow me on my social media support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about yet another ridiculous thing put out by netflix till next time